Psalms 119 verses 169 to 176. Todd, prayer and praise. As we conclude this chapter, which is written by one man, assumingly, that has been divided into the alphabet of the Hebrew language, like our ABCs. Let, let my cry come near before thee in prayer. Speaking out to God. And cry is, it's not just, you know, just one-on-one -on -one conversation. There's emphasis to it, O oh Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. So what he's crying about, what, what he's pleading to God, he wants to know the relationship with God by the word of God. He's not questioning why God is doing it or why it's happening to him. He wants to know what can he do about it? What can he learn? If there's something missing in his life. Let my supplication, that's a petition and earnest request, come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. Okay, he wanted understanding by the word. Now, according to the word, deliver. And when you're in the Old Testament, God spoke, if you did what you were supposed to do and you were honest and acceptable and as a nation, he would give you blessings. he throw the enemies away at you. If you did what you were supposed to do, you go in one way and they'll scatter seven. My lips shall utter praise. When thou hast taught me thy statutes. Do you praise God when you hear him preaching? When a preacher is, is, is brought about you in the Sunday service or midweek service, are you praising God or are you cussing out the preacher? Sometimes when God hits you, it's it's for your your benefit. Out of a whole congregation of people, he went after you. Don't be mad at the preacher. You just turn to God. Listen, that's what the children of Israel did in the wilderness with Moses. They got mad and blamed the preacher. At times, they were ready to stone Moses, and it was God. It was There were people who were killed, and they blamed Moses, and it was God. You ought to praise. Listen, if they praised God, they would have been in the, the promised land. Before the 40 years. When the spies came back and Joshua and Caleb said, hey, we can go in there and get it. They should have praised the Lord and said, hey, giants, they're even bigger for them to fall by God. But they didn't. That's a lip. My tongue shall speak of thy word. For all thy commandments are righteous. When you speak, do you speak the word? Or do you speak other foolish things? Let thy hand help me, God's hand, for I have chosen thy precepts. You know, there was an insurance company, you know, we lend you a hand or something like that. Let God lend you a hand. I have longed for thy salvation. You're waiting for the Messiah. O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Let my soul live. The eternal part of you is going to live. But that's not, you know, an afterlife. That's, Lord, let me let my soul dwell with you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son has the, the, the wrath of God abiding upon him. And it shall praise thee. You know what we're going to do when we live in eternity? We're going to praise God. That's what we're going to do. And let thy judgments help me. Judging yourself. Getting the sin out of your life. Getting those things in your life that don't need to be there will help you. And get you a closer walk with the Lord.
And the last verse of this chapter, this longest chapter, is kind of weird. If it's all about the word, and it is all about the word. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant. And even the Lord Jesus Christ gives a parable. About that one sheep that goes away. And he goes and finds it. And matching that with Psalm 119, 176. That sheep is Israel. A Jew. There's only one place where it mentions the church as a, as a sheep. In John chapter 10, it's later on, it says, Other sheep I have. We're not called sheep as a church. We're called a bride. We're called the church. We're called servants. And then he calls out to God and says, Seek thy servant. I'm lost. There are times you just got to ask God, I'm lost. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I've been. I need you to seek me. For I do not forget thy commandments. And if you don't forget the commandments, that means you put it to memory. Memorization is a Bible doctrine. So the last thought of Psalms 119 is, I will not forget thy commandments. You ought to try to memorize scripture as much as you can. It is Bible. As we close with all the aspects of Psalms 119, it's all about the Word, and the Word is the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is the Word, John chapter 1, second, uh, first, first epistle of John. The Father, the Word, and the, uh, the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. And the Word is despised, and I'm not talking about the world, I'm talking about amongst Christians. There's another word out there performed by Satan, written by Satan, with the pen of the brimstone of hell, with the same name that we hold. This wasn't published by a king. Published by man. And they say that the, the modern Bibles are not easy to remember, to remember the way they're written. But there's something about the king's English that it's easier. And we close. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power through out the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. 
How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim, my God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee.